if every job or every role paid the same, what would you actually do? Um, I... Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I got to meet everybody that was involved, um, which was kind of a an act of trust, like in James, um, who mm. I was working with, and I got which to meet everyone. Right? Yes, yes. Yep. Uh, so um, we got to the. Can you hear all the machinery that's in the background it's, as well? It's completely fine. No, I, I can't really. It's actually yeah, noise cancelling. That's, that's quite good. That's, yeah, that's fine. So long as you can't hear it, I, I'm fine as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I got to meet the team. Uh, we went to the office that the architect offered us and the architect was really lovely, really interested in the project as well. Um, and um, we like we lost the interviewer uh, mm. like the day before and James managed to find another one like in time. And then she had like a, a question and answer with me the night before. Mm. And she's like now wanting to do a separate interview with me she's a training journalist mm. um and the and the message seemed to be clear to everyone everyone got it and we Good. were really on board with like make like getting the message across through this interview and so the next stage is i think to get everyone to orkney for a kind of observation stage where we we observe what it is i'm talking about um, and we interview people with knowledge and expertise on on this whole issue mm. um and I, i'm like i'm not i'm not going to worry about the financial like barriers at the moment because mm. i think so long as we get this story together that we've just done uh, in london um and i i continue to communicate with people it's going to i'm going to be able to um i'll it will happen in some way i'll be able to get everyone up to 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 start um on the next stage which is the is actually like being it has to be in orkney um it's mm, a, it comes from my connection to orkney so the next stage can't be in the sort of more generic setting um centered around me it has to be about what it is i'm responding to which mm. has to be a location yeah so uh, and what was it like doing the interview so when you're being asked these questions were you able to kind of uh, obviously the the formulation of the idea is probably a little bit more it gets more certain the more you talk about it right there's more clarity with exactly yeah. you know what this whole thing is uh, and was it still the premise of you know still anchored in the end goal of this project is to create a kind of a big table out of a bunch of plastic that we collect or was it a little bit more still discovery and kind of like this journey that you're on so the the table is is one of the it's almost like our response to the the thing that i was um originally interested in around the orkney chair yeah um, and essentially the message that we were getting to on Thursday night when we were filming was can plastic waste be as valuable to modern society, modern communities as driftwood was to the Arcadian crofter? Oh, sweet. That was the that, that was really, the uh, that, succinct yeah that's where the that's where the study of the orkney chairs history led me to that's the conclusion i got to and um we kind of ended on that like in the mm. interview um and also going further to say like can the story encourage us to take responsibility for the way in which we interact with with the stuff that we produce and consume mm. and the waste that we produce and can we then like you know consider it a, a mineable resource like reconsidering plastic waste as a mineable resource 
um, and an opportunity rather than a, than a problem and an environmental issue. Um, and then the, the banquet table, which while I was there, I ended up having lots of really good conversations with, with the, the rural development officer in Orkney separately about this separate project. Yeah. Um, around the banquet table. Um, and this project, that, that project, this project, that project, there's then like another one, but that's all kind of slowed down a bit with the, the university mm -hmm. and the 3D printing. Yeah. Um, the table is almost like a way of me enacting this uh, culture change, this this like reimagining of our, our relationship with plastic waste. It's mm. it's like a way of demonstrating this uh, this idea that I've sort of been taken this uh, the. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying now. Yeah, it, that is like a... It's the outworking of, of the I've conclusion. Discovered. Yeah, the outworking of what you've discovered. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm hoping that... So March seems to be a time that they may be able to get funding to bring me back to Hoi. Mm. I mean, I'm going to put as much time as I can in, like, but at the same time, this is also me developing my career as a designer, and yeah. I need to then, like, continue to introduce the practicalities of me being involved which is you know I, I I need to be to be paid to come in and consult and yes it's about community and but that old-fashioned community no longer exists in the same way you know we still have to participate in capitalism and yeah pay our rent and you know so how do we how do we work how do we work all of this? Uh, so mm. what's great is by stating that I have certain you know financial requirements, um, they're now factoring that into their funding, which is amazing because that then mm. means that what that also allows me to do is focus entirely on that project. If it's yeah, okay. of course, it means I, I can finish. I can schedule uh, this in as a project and go to Orkney have you know I, I you know I, if 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 we need to work it all out I can pay for my own flights because I'd be going home anyway but mm. then they're paid for my time when I go to Hoi when I start working so yeah. it's this it's this interesting mix now of the collaborative thing that's happening in London with this team mm. uh, who are sort of what I like is they're looking at it as an as outsiders yeah. And I need to make it succinct and clear to them as outsiders because the message, you know, the subject is universal. The, the subject of plastic waste is universal. So mm -hmm. if I can get it across to them and if they want to then rave about it, which they're really into it, which is brilliant. They want it to be clear. They want to help me like get my the message out. Mm -hmm. Then I can also work on like how do I apply this ideology this this new way of thinking about plastic through my heritage in Orkney because the community is like parts of the community is um like interested in actually applying this idea then yeah. there's like the right mix of things coming together I think mm -hmm. and you know none of this has been done yet either other than mm -hmm. the interviews there's a lot to be like proven as well. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because there could be a really nice, there could be through this discovery, a really nice kind of startup model in the same way that people take their cans mm. to get them weighed and get paid for them. And especially if you could tie it in with the council, if the council were basically had you as a, you know, for argument's sake, I keep on going back to, you know, chairs because they're the easiest things to think about, you know, school chairs. Yeah. Let's say that there were, you know, they've now had throughout the year five chairs that have been damaged, whereas you guys have then been commissioned to purchase or to manufacture or create five chairs out of recyclable, you know, plastic that's been collected by the kids. You know, that that kind of model seems like it, it could potentially work. But of course, it just takes the time to, to put those things in place and, and to be positioned yeah. as the trusted uh, 
kind of creator or, or supplier of something like that in you know, an ecosystem like yeah. that. The interesting thing I am finding as well is um, where do I put my time specifically? So do I put my do I eventually put my time into building an infrastructure, like mm -hmm. a, a local infrastructure that allows people to process, like to to gather and bring their plastic? And uh, you know, I am running a service that makes things. Is that and that may be bespoke, or it might be stock objects there's something interesting about it being like whatever people need at the time because i think saying like i'm going to build a business around for example chairs <laughs> uh, that then limits what you are doing with plastic yeah um and the world doesn't necessarily need more chairs but if the infrastructure is there there's the possibility to be at least processing plastic into a usable material that can go through like other like extrusion processes, injection molding or 3D printing yeah. or whatever is needed. But how and also hopefully, I yeah, hopefully brought back into the system. So, for example, whatever that output yeah. is, once it's had its you know shelf life, let's say, let's say again, let's use the, uh, the kind of example of chair because it's just easier for the conversation. If it was a chair and that chair ends up breaking. Yeah. You know, do you then take it back, melt it down, reprint the chair? You know, is it something that you could create a circular process in its entirety um, rather than, well, I've printed the chair, now the chair's broken. Well, that's now waste. You know, is there that circular yeah. motion of, of melting it down? Obviously, there's, um, you know, still requires energy yeah. to do that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's that's another really interesting thing is that recycling takes a lot of energy. Um, and I think something that I think I can learn as I go is is the the figures, the the reality of recycling versus producing like virgin plastics. Mm -hmm. And then the you know it'd be amazing to get to a stage where I had enough like information that showed the uh, the difference between like continuously producing and disposing of like virgin plastics and um stop like theoretically stopping virgin plastic production and just recycling you know yeah. this new mineable resource which we've created for ourselves mm. um but one of the one of the things is do i keep myself as a consultant that comes in on other people's projects and I rather than me spending the next like 15 years developing a business around one specific thing mm -hmm. um because I want my, like uh, and from a lifestyle choice pers from a lifestyle perspective I want to remain free to explore design uh, engage with people I, I don't want to find myself behind a desk um this is the really interesting thing about going through something that is such an interesting idea at the start to then find out how invested do i become in the practicalities of it or can i position myself to be um oh what i was gonna say i had a word for what i could be uh, in this situation Like, can I can I empower other people through, uh, like my research, the projects I've been involved in, the stories I'm telling? Can I be involved in that way, um, at a certain stage of people's business? Because another thing is, I can't fix the issue I'm I'm talking about on my own, and I'm not interested in doing that. Um, yeah. and I think the li the liberating thing is that I can just do the thing I'm good at. And I'm terrible at business. I hate money. I hate money. Mm. I don't mm. want to sit and think about it. I don't want to build a business model around how much money I can make like on each chair. I don't want to think for a second about margins. Mm. Um, and I, I guess that that kind of stuff is I've interesting you, because, but, yeah. yeah, you have to because it's about, you know, sustainable business. 
if you don't build a yeah. sustainable business, then you'll make a load of people redundant that are reliant on this company. For example, if you think of Arcadia Group, it wasn't a sustainable model, which then meant that the whole multiple brands went bust. So I think even though you might dislike finances, and if you dislike the kind of the accounting, well, yes, once you have a certain level, you can d- kind of give it to someone else to do the, the accounting. But yeah. if you dislike the concept of business, making the money, um, I think it's a case of converting that to, it, it's a tool. The more money you make, the greater the tool is, the greater of the tool to, to increase yeah. the impact that you might already be having. So I think it's also yeah. trying to work out, you know, if you don't want to w- work a business, that's fine. The consultant role is there. Uh, and I think that that, that sometimes is um, what it has to be because as you said, it's bigger than yourself and it's a, a community driven thing and it needs to last beyond your years, right? So how does it do that? The idea needs to be you know, put within a community so they take hold and they're inspired uh, by that. And it's probably because you have the right conversations and inspire someone to do it and basically egging them on and, and encouraging them on the side. So yeah, if you're not interested in doing a business uh, with it right now, which is completely fine, and being a more of a consultant thing, then ultimately, have you got your manufacturing or your design side paying your bills? So you can do this kind of like freelancing, if not free type conversations, you know, because that's what I've kind of uh, jumped into rather than, you know, saying, hey, I want to be this coach. And therefore, I will only be a coach if people pay me. Well, it's not going to really lift off the ground as much, right? Rather than kind of then the opposite is, well, I'll run a digital agency. And then with my free time, it means the bills have been paid for and then I can do coaching on top. So it's not held to, to kind of ransom yeah. the thing that I really want to do. And it sounds like the thing you really want to do is the strategic ideas, you know, top level and, and inspiration rather than in the grit of actually, you know, well, here we are molding stuff today and we're melting this stuff down tomorrow and, and all that stuff. Would that be mm-hmm. kind of correct? Yeah. Well, I guess another another useful thing for me is that the processes of processing plastic have all been done. Yeah. Um, and I think like that's all accessible. Um, it's all mm. there to import. You know, say if 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 the I think the way that we're going with the the Hoi community is um, that we would bring in the equipment needed to for them to process their yes. own plastic yeah um and the first thing that they would do with that is as a community with with me involved physically like working on different parts of it is is build this um banquet table which yeah also like represents a a, a lot of other things that they are looking for within the community too like we could have been making anything but that's what they they came to that conclusion because they were looking to produce something new for their their community space that they had kind of lost over lockdown and Mm. then as a greater kind of consequence of like you know modern connectivity there is a kind of loss of 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 like the use of public spaces people dance together less people eat together less in town halls Mm. people and um, so uh, all of a sudden they are now starting to feel like they need this space again they're starting to grow things outside the community hall they then want to cook together you then therefore eat together and you then have Kayleys in this mm. space as well yeah you can have weddings um, mm. and so this object is then just a small part of 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 what it means to be a community but it's also a product of the community's needs and what yeah which i love i, I think it fits in really really nicely yeah it's a really nice application of the whole discovery piece and the conclusion of this is this a case study or this um example of what you can yeah. put together just kind of reeling back a little bit um you know if, if every job or every role paid the same what would you actually do um i'd be a dancer probably a dancer awesome and why are you not a dancer <laughs> um, because i want because i like design 
and it was presented as a way of making money, which it's not. But it was also, and I, I yeah, I don't know. I like no. Maybe I, maybe I wouldn't be a dancer professionally, but uh, I love dancing, and that's always something I wondered if I could do. Um, like if I could make money doing it, but were you also meaning specifically like with this, this role? I I, I wasn't specific um, with this role. I was like anything you want to do because it sounds like, broadly speaking, you're a pure creative. Ideas are um, kind of you have ideas all the time. So I think it's fascinating when there's this. I don't want to get involved. I want to be this kind of consultant, but I want for it to happen because it's important to me so i think that dilemma is always really interesting because creatives typically get trapped in the whole well i need to make money but i love ideas and i i'm really fascinated with this thing over here so is there a mechanism uh, that you can create that is reasonably you know um, kind of easy to manage that produces income which then kind of it allows you then to jump from idea to idea because it's all taken care of. And I also want to just, just figure out then the alignment of, if you were going to answer to say, literally what I'm doing right now in designing furniture is what I love, you know, or designing uh, stuff, then it's like, well, great. At least you can do that as, as a, a form of income and increase that and make that more profitable um, and yeah. find the mechanisms that do give you money. So then you have the spare time then to do all these creative projects and all these community driven and the things that are really tied closely with your um, like identity and, uh, and kind of background and, and history and stuff as well, which is what I'm trying to get into. Really, I love helping people and that's the main thing, but I can't do that day to day because, you know, I would have never uh, nowhere to live. So the agency is something that I also do love. I also have loved designing. And that is the mechanism to then allow me to do the other thing. Yeah. And it's interesting kind of hearing from you about, you know, you not feeling that there is money in design. And it'd be interesting to kind of just a little bit more of what you kind of mean by that or what's your experience around that? Mm. I guess um, for me being self-employed since graduation, I have, and I, I tried, uh, I assumed I would be working in a design agency, in an office, in a studio, um, yeah. uh, sitting drawing, sitting uh, prototyping with, with people. I had a certain idea of how that was going to turn out. And I also mm. knew that I wanted to be like, so I, I got I got um, an interview with Mark Newson when I first graduated, and he's a designer, a, a really famous designer. Mm. So for me, that like I ended up getting completely like enamored and starstruck by because I I there there's a there's an so so with with um like money also comes that the idea of success what does success look like and for me as a designer what does success look like as a designer mm. and for me it looked like uh being the face uh being the one that runs the company has mm. a team of people you're not doing everything you're doing what you yeah. do best yeah um and unfortunately with that then comes the lure of of uh you know typical fame being interviewed you know all the, mm. the things that are actually only a product of you doing what you do well and um, they're not the end result so i've actually had to spend quite a lot of time over the last 10 years unlearning what i thought success looked like actually mm. um because i i idolize these people who i wanted to work for to begin with and yeah then who I wanted to be and mm. I also spent too much time focusing and comparing focusing on them and comparing myself to them mm. rather than just like thinking about what my particular story is which then sort of you then discover what your contribution is 
and it's not yeah. going to look like anyone else's. It might not ever look like the same amount of money or the mm. same amount of prestige or exposure and um, the same kind of clients. Um, mm. So I am now almost like trying to unpick a lot of what I, I'm doing by kind of learning how to do what interests me the most, which is, 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 is working with people. It is about community. It is about the yeah. conversations, the dialogues mm. um, as well. And what I've discovered as well is I, of course, I want to make beautiful things. And I, I want to, I love those processes. Um, but for me as a cabinet maker, those processes are exhausting. I, I, yeah. I don't want to keep doing this like process where I'm working all this stuff out. Everything is different every time. And I'm only doing it for the money. You know, this, this bunk bed here yeah. is, is, what, is an example. Um, mm. it, I hope it's something that they love. Uh, mm. It's been designed for them i've built it i'm considering it i'm putting lots of time into it they're paying me uh, a, a decent amount of money it's keeping mm. things going like projects like that but at the same time i'm not like the designer i want to be when i'm doing these things and that's where this new direction has started to offer like a, a way of 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 kind of giving me something that actually means quite a lot more to me mm. i think yeah that, that's super interesting it's really cool to see you verbalizing some of the the kind of the thought processes and stuff and it sometimes it's difficult not to get caught up in the you know work your way up so you can get that fame and and trying to focus on you know where do you have where do you have the most um kind of impact right it's uh, mainly life is about two things about character building good character and increasing in in impact and that impact is um it doesn't mean you know millions of dollars it, it might mean you know that you've helped one person you know it might mean that you've helped 10 people it might you know it's the the impact stuff and yeah i completely see the sometimes the the financial stuff is allowing you and unlocking you to to do greater impact where it's really interesting how you're wanting to to kind of pivot and it's always a challenge especially when you know you still need to tie a small amount of just ticking over um mm. to things as well it's challenging isn't it and to enjoy the process as well rather than going yeah. you know i'm not the designer i wanted to be when i was 30 i'm the designer i am at 30 i i've gone through a whole load of processes i could never have foreseen that has led me to this stage that has like i've, I've gone through all these processes that have caused me to you know consider my own heritage in a way that informs mm. me um all of a sudden there is a really fascinating story and it doesn't matter how long it takes to get there um you know I don't have a mortgage. I don't have kids. I don't have all the things that, you know, I thought I would have, but it's much more real. Um, and more fulfilling, I would assume, because it's kind of, you're, you're living, right? You're, you're really trying to get to the depths of what, what makes you tick, what really feeds your kind of spirit and, and really excites yeah. you. And it ultimately is yeah. the, the purity of connecting with people and, and working with people, which is, a really good conclusion a lot of people don't conclude that you know a lot of people don't figure out what makes them tick and they just do stuff because they've been told to do stuff or this is the route so you should just do this route you know and, and living someone else's story and all that stuff so i think yeah ultimately i hope that you haven't put too much pressure on yourself that oh, i'm not where i am at, at because this discovery is super valuable and 30 is still young like i'm 31 like 30 is still incredibly young really if you really think about it yeah, you've still got another 30 it years is. of work it life is. kind of thing, you know, to it kind of like figure out stuff. Yeah. And the more you can learn to love what you're doing, and the less that it is about essentially the accumulation of wealth over the mm. over your lifetime. Yeah. I think the more wealthy, like we, as I'm also 31, um, 
will the more wealthy we will be at the end of the process and the more there will be to continue to offer like I don't want to retire I hate that idea of just like yeah. giving up that's what that looks mm. like to me and um, you've worked your ass off for someone else and now you get to play golf no thank you yeah I'd rather die actually <laughs> mm. and I think it's about you know I, I really want to make sure that I'm empty when I die that I've given everything and for me, the mechanism of business is increasing my impact. So, for example, a real example is um, my mum and dad happened to be in quite a lot of debt. And I actually was able to use my business profits to get them out of debt because I was earning so much. And some would say, well, there's no point accumulating this wealth. But I'm like, when the wealth is directed correctly, like that, that's why I believe it's important for Christians not to shy away from, you know, business and stuff because it's about well i'd rather that money be in these hands over here rather than in these hands over here that it's just profiting for profiting sake so it's about the, yeah. the kind of the accountability tied to then the increase of that money which ultimately increases the type of impact in that yeah. in that remit so i think it's a case of yeah not shying away too much but just being grounded which it sounds like you already are grounded in the right kind of way and then it's just figuring out the route that um that, that allows you what's the route that allows you to have more of this stuff you know working with people more of these dialogues what's yeah. the the mechanism and the tool and it might be you know a permanent role somewhere because that's feeding this mechanism over here or it might be that you know i'm yeah, done building stuff happen. so it's the design yeah. stuff you know yeah and that would be completely uh, yeah, fine there's no failure to, in that you know i i don't want to i think what i need to be is flexible and and open-minded about how this is all going to unfold uh yeah maybe even just over the next two years like mm. there's so much so many conversations going on with people asking about deadlines now what's our next stage what do we do next yeah um you know just do two years and don't worry about the money keep working on what does bring in the money keep putting your ideas out there keep working with these people that are also responding to you mm. and don't let, like a lack of money stop you I, I get very afraid when I have no like I'm in debt right now because of the mm. pandemic and I'm starting I know that I will be okay um mm. because of the work that is now coming in I know I'm going to yeah. be okay so keep applying yourself to the bigger picture um mm. that's kind of where i'm at and and i also don't know how much of i don't know how much of that bigger picture i even see right now i don't know mm. the effect but uh um it's all like there's such a big element of trust as well and yeah i don't know what but like trust in the situation almost um mm. To, to to keep going to like ha you put yourself out there people respond and things continue whereas if i was to stay quiet i was worried about money so i didn't want to say anything right now whatever mm. then i wouldn't be where i am already which is 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 so exciting and it's real and it's it's more of life than like yeah but yeah, i realize that yeah, being yeah, on the attack exactly. is is more fruitful because then you can solutionize how to figure out this thing back here rather than yeah. being on the defense. And, you know, being on the defense is never going to necessarily generate additional creative ideas and, yeah. you know, mechanisms and innovation to, to get you out to, to a slightly better position. But, uh, yeah. Awesome. You never know who you're going to Of course yeah. not. It's really, really good chatting with you, though. Thank you for listening to Dan Ryland's podcast today. Hopefully you've took something away from this session. And please do tweet Dan or DM him via Twitter or Instagram or look at his LinkedIn if you have any more questions about today or anything about your personal business that you might be struggling about that Dan might be able to help. Hope you have found this enjoyable and see you next time.